Hey, it's Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. I wanted to take a few minutes today and just go over uh, a broad overview of how to use MeasureQuick. I realized on our YouTube videos we just didn't have anything out there that really covered that. So I just want you to notice, first of all, what I've got here is I've got a, I've got a, a pack of probes here. I actually have both field piece and testo in this box. I've got a MeasureQuick printer here so we can print the results out when we're done. I'm a big believer in printing out a hard copy of the results. I think it's great for the customer. And then I've got a Redfish IDVM 550 meter and I've got an iPad here. Now one thing's, uh, I get a couple questions about what kind of case do I use for the iPad. This is a Logitech case, and what I really like about it, it's got a back a kick, kick stand for the, for the display, and then it's got a magnetic keyboard on here. So what's great with this thing is I can disconnect it if I want to go barcode scan or something like that. I'm not uh, fiddling with the keyboard all the time. And then as soon as I move it up back up, it just connects to the iPad again. I really like the iOS devices versus Android. The reason I like them is because they simply, uh, they simply work better overall. It's just a, a little bit more powerful processor in these things. And also um, their iOS is locked down, so it, it doesn't allow for as many variables as we have with the Android stuff on there. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn this thing on and unlock it and turn on measure quick here. We'll go ahead and we'll start pulling out some of the tools that we have. And uh, so you can see what we got here. Uh, first, I've got a couple of testo manometers here and I'll turn those on. Uh, I've got one for the supply and one for the return. We can also do supply or uh, manifold pressure and gas pressure with these. I use two of them. We're going to do some diagnostics later on for airflow in there and having a supply and a return will be handy. You can get away with one if you want to do that, but for now, uh, I've been using two of them. I've got my field piece probes here marked outdoor air, return air, and supply air. I mark these so that they're just easier to put in uh, the ductwork so I know which one goes where. Because once you put the mapping in measure quick, it holds it, so you don't have to deal with that anymore. And, uh, and I like just having them set up so I can just really quickly deploy them. Again, same thing I do on my, on my temperature clamps here. I have these marked suction line, liquid line, and discharge line. The, liquid, the, the discharge line is optional. Uh, Brian Orr just wrote an article just the other day talking talked about measure discharge line whenever you can. This is a ream unit, it's real easy to get to the discharge line, so we're gonna go ahead and measure that also. And then I've got on here a, a high and a low pressure probe, so we'll turn those two on. So those are going now. And then I've got in here uh, one other thing here, which is a straighter core depressor. If you wanna come in here with a camera just so you can see this, um, this is a, just a, a, a tool that allows, it's basically a service valve. So when I drive this in, there's a little stem depressor in there and it pushes on the straighter opens up the Schrader core, and then I can read pressure, then I can back this out, and it depresses the Schrader core. So this is really, really nice for not freezing your fingers, right? I, I like these a lot. We use these on the liquid line all the time. It also prevents uh, any refrigerant loss on there. So when we're doing a test, the, the losses become very, very minimal. So after I got everything hooked up here, the only thing I got to have to turn on is my meter here. So I'll turn on my uh, Redfish meter. I'm gonna turn that to kilowatts, because kilowatts is gonna bring in volts and amps and power all at the same time. Then I'm just gonna to go to my toolbox manager here and I'll just turn these on. So that'll connect my Redfish meter. You can see it says zero watts. My Testo smart probes and my field piece. I can verify my mapping. So this is the uh, supplier and return static. If I wanna zero these out, I can zero them. And I'll go ahead and zero them just so we get accurate static pressure readings. I head back here and I can go to my field piece probes. I can see I have a low pressure, a high pressure, a suction line, a liquid line, a discharge line supply and return air and outdoor air. All my batteries are good, and so everything's ready to go and measure quick. So I'm gonna hit the home button here. You'll notice the targets, they aren't gonna calculate accurately until the thing's running for a little while. So uh, the first thing we wanna do, because it can take longer to, for the system to stabilize than anything, is turn on a piece of equipment and get the equipment running. We wanna get the equipment running because it's gonna take five, 10, 15 minutes for it to stabilize depending on the size of the equipment. So while I'm doing the rest of the reporting and things like that, I'll be able to do that. So I'm going to put my probes on here. Outdoor air, you want to make sure you put this in the condenser air stream. So the air is coming in here. I want to be out of the line of, uh, of, of the of sight of the sunlight in there. So if the sun was shining down here, I put it on the opposite side so I get a, a really reflective air temperature measurement of what the air, air measurement is. Return air, I'm just going to put this on the face of the filter grill, just measuring the air coming in to return. If I had a drop here, I might drill a hole and put it into the drop. Supply one is, is a little bit um, more important here. You wanna make sure you don't, do not put your probe like this on the duct. Because air coming out here, and it's coming out high velocity, it actually turns an air behind it. It's called the Bernoulli effect. And that'll give you a false reading on this probe. It'll actually show a lot warmer temperature than it actually is. So 
So for supply here, we want to be inside the duct work in here. So I'm going to put that inside the duct. I could also, if I wanted to spread these apart a little bit, just wiggle this in here and tie it in this way. I have a hole in the duct. In this case here, I have a tapered plug that we can use to plug this when I'm done. You can pick these up. True Tech sells them. A lot of supply houses sell these. But you want to be in the supply air stream, so we're getting a good representation of the mixed air of the supply air temperature here, and it's not some kind of a random mix temperature coming out of a register. So now that I have all those done, I'm going to take over here and get my high and low pressure probes in my outdoor air, or in my uh, high and low pressure probes in my line temps. Excuse me. So we'll go ahead and pull this door off here, and because these are marked. You know, a suction line, just put it on there, it's going to confirm the discharge line. And a lot of these, when you open these up, if you, if you have them open for any amount of time, they'll go yellow telling you they don't have a good connection. We connect the line, then they'll beep and they'll confirm they're connected. Then I've got my high pressure probe marked here. This is the one I'm going to use on my quarter presser tool. So when I put this quarter presser on, I'll make sure that's backed out first. I'll screw this on here just till it touches and then put my probe on here. Then all I'll do is just turn the service valve in a, a, a turn or so, and that's gonna get pressure on the probe. For my vapor line here, or suction line, I'm gonna measure right on the reversing valve. This is called a vapor line. Vapor line is a heat pump, so it can be hot vapor going out to the evaporator, it can be cool suction gas coming back. This is the true suction off the reversing valve, or a lot of times you'll see those, uh, like down here there'll be a port that'll have the, a true suction port but I do want to be on the true suction there. So now I've got everything coming into, into measure quick. So we'll come over here and you can see, first of all, that I, I have a, a triangle here in the corner. If I tap on that triangle, it's going to tell me the system's not stable. And what we have right now is it's just going through a stabilization process. So if we were to go to our trending for a minute here, what we'd see, if we scroll through this, is pressure's changing, temperature's changing, Supplier temperatures dropping, right? You can see our temperature splits increasing, and until the system stabilizes, we really can't evaluate anything. So if I want to, what I can do is, is tap on the plus key here and reset, restart the trends, and uh, or you can just leave them run. It doesn't matter here, but I'm going to go back to the home key here or home page. We'll let and we'll start doing a, a project. Now in this case here, I'm going to exit this project because I happened to start one before, just so you can see from the beginning here. This is a list of projects. Yours may or may look the same depending on the permissions you have. If you're working in utility programs and you're going to see uh, all the utility projects, most of you are going to have permissions to see uh, just the, the measure quick on there. The permissions is up here in this corner. When I tap on the little guy in the, in the, in the corner here and I hit check permissions, this pulls up the permissions that I have. They'll either be basic permissions or they'll be uh, extended lists like I have on here. And so when I go into my project now and I pick the project I want to do, just an AC heat pump, I'll hit continue, now I can start this project. Now notice that there's a red X next to everything here, that's because nothing's filled out. So I click on the project, and I'm just gonna type in here, uh, just test. It's just a test, and I hit submit, and notice that that section will go green. Now job site information is gonna pull up our general location, and immediately this icon, it, it's gonna start to, this is where our geolocation, where it's picking up we're at. That'll refine itself over time, and what it's doing is it's just triangulating the position. So I'm going to move the pin over to the building that we're in, and uh, we may see that dot move, or move in, but it'll pull up our address right here, 3425, so I can verify that. I'm going to put in our customer information here, so we'll just hit uh, measure quick. And this is looking for like a, a, building, a, a building name on here, so I got to type that again. And then you can hit the tab key to go to the next field. And then on here, I'm gonna click uh, billing and, and service address the same. You'll see it automatically populated all the address off the geotag location, and I'll just hit submit. So now when I hit submit here, that'll go green, and now I'm gonna go do equipment information. So now the system information is, basically I have a split system, and I'm just gonna go through here first of all and just populate all these as a uh, ream. And I'm just gonna hit tab a couple times.
and now I can disconnect my keyboard here. And what I'm going to do is, um, on, on this one i got to type it in. So I'm going to go over here to the model number of the machine. And this is a, an RPNL 018 JAZ. So there's my model number. RPNL 018, oops, 8 JAZ. And you'll notice that when I hit the next field, all this will capitalize automatically. So you don't have to worry about capitalizing things that'll do it for you. Down here is a barcode, and on that barcode, if I tap on this, I can uh, uh, pull in my barcode reader. And when I hold this up to the barcode, it'll pick that up, and it's gonna pull in the model number, or serial number automatically. So air handler here, we'll come over here. On this air handler, uh, the door is not on it anymore, so I don't have a model, a model for that, so I'm gonna put NA. You do wanna put NAs, and if you don't have information, if it's not available, hit NA. I do have, though, a serial number, so I can go ahead and tap on this and uh, pull up the barcode reader. So I'll pull that in there, and you can see that number came in right away. You can also take a photo of that label, just so I have a photo, so if I have to make any editing, I can do that, and hit use photo. So you can see that RH1P18, 181, that number right there is automatically populated in the barcode here, so I don't have to type all that in. Evaporator on this, it, uh, it's, it's got a model number down here, uh, RCH24. And on the iPads, you can also, you can see how it's got the little, little digits here, the two above the W. If you pull down, you can swipe that, it'll actually type in the 24 on the iPad. So then I got 17ST. So I hit pull down again, 17ST, and then uh, A AMA. And then the serial number on here, I'm just gonna put NA, and I'll take a photo here of that tag. I can zoom in if I need to zoom in on that. I can zoom in on that. Now one thing I want you to notice here is that we have a, uh, a two-ton evaporator and a one and a half ton condenser. So that would be classified as high efficiency. I'll hit submit here. And now I'm gonna go into my system profile. Now system profile is already checked because there was a basic profile on there, but I still have to go in and make some changes. So I'm gonna click on cooling. I'm gonna tell it that it's a one and a half ton, 410A, uh, standard 400 CFM per ton. This is a 13 to 16 sear. If we go over here for a minute, let me just show you this. On the label here, on our energy guide, this is a 13 sear piece of equipment. So that's where that comes from. High efficiency evaporator. We'll flip this panel over here and We'll take a look here at our subcooling target. So if you get down here where you can see on this, it's cooling mode here. And if we look at the cooling mode, and this is a, 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 a ton and a half unit, we scroll down here, you can see it's between 19 and 20 degrees on the subcooling target. So we're gonna change this here. We'll just put in 19.5. Uh, so now I got my subcooling goal on there, my total external static pressure, <coughs> 0.5, and I'll hit submit. Now electrical information, condensing unit, single phase, 200-208, single phase, 200-208, and PSC motor, right? And the PSC, <coughs> excuse me, you know it's PSC over here because you can see down at the bottom we have a, a permanent split capacitor. So that's what that is, that's just a capacitor, permanent split motor, and I'll hit submit on here. So now if I go back to my keyboard here for just a second, I go up and hit submit, now I have all my measurements entered. So now when I go to my measurements, that's the only thing I have left to do here, I can either review them here, or I can just tap on one or, and view any of the things, you can see all my readings coming in, or I can view it in the graphical view, which is Measure Quick Home. So when I go to the Measure Quick Home screen here, you still, see I still have a triangle here, but if I tap on it this time, what you're gonna see is the system's still not stable here, so we have to wait for it to uh, stabilize before we get the results. Um, I'm going to go ahead, and while we're at it here, I'm going to put in my supply and ready to turn air static probes because I didn't do that here. One of them is marked negative, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in here and get the negative one. And my other one is marked positive. And you want to make sure on, the, on this probe that you put this in facing the airstream here. So I'll put this in facing the airstream. So now i got supply and return air static. And you'll notice that after we stabilize here, it says there's no system faults. Now we're not quite done yet here because we do have to do electrical. So we can either go to electrical here, 
And uh, what you'll notice right away is my, my meter comes up in watts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the, uh, the iPad over here on the unit here just so I can move it around here. And I'm gonna set my meter up. And typically what I like to do on these is grab the evaporator fan first. All right, now you can also, um, if you have to close this in to your, to your meter, like in this case here, I happen to have a, a leg out here I can grab. Uh, you want to have the doors on here, but if I had to have the doors on, I could clamp it in, clamp the leads on, close it in the door, and it would start making a reading here. And then all I got to do here is hit capture. So right now you can see I have 229 watts, 210 volts, 1.1 amps, my power factor 0.98. When I hit capture here, it's going to store that reading. So now I have that reading stored in there. So now I'm going to move over to my condenser. And I'll do the same thing here. Now I do have, let me walk over here and grab some, uh, some clamps here. Just so I can put them on there. I do have, I'm just going to clamp around the hot leg coming in. So I got a, a red and a black coming in off my whip. I'm just going to grab one of those. And I'll go ahead and screw these leads on here so we can make the electrical measurement. And you don't have to capture electrical, uh, you can let it run live. And a lot of times I'll do that, just if, if I'm gonna add charge or something, I can see my wattage changing. So I'll go ahead and clamp on the, the red one to the, to the red side, and the black to the black. It really doesn't make too much difference. If you got them backwards, it would still read just fine. Um, but now you can see on our iPad now, we have about 1,067, 1,065 watts coming under power. 210 volt or amperage and I'll just hit submit at this point. So now when I hit this, now you can see I have I have my sear, I have my total external static pressure, my fan efficacy, and I'm bouncing around there a little bit on the on the sear rating um, because there's thresholds built into there. So we're right on a threshold between uh, being 13 and let's say 13.1 or so. And it's just that this is a efficiency zone. So this is Standard efficiency this is what we expect to see that could run into the green zone. We are higher efficiency units, but this is, uh, this is all running quite well. So I'm gonna go back in the project for a minute and I'm gonna view each section. So I have all my readings come in for low and high pressure. I have all my uh, return and dry bulbs, wet bulbs. Anytime you see a calculator, that's a calculator reading. I can see my supply and return air static, my total external static. I'm estimating the CFM, MeasureQuick does that automatically. If I had a capture hood, I could capture it here, but all the readings are coming in. Static pressure looks good. I'm gonna take a look at my electrical measurements. All those are in, so I hit submit. I'll take a look at my performance calculations if I want to. So I can see I'm doing 106% of my normalized capacity, 98.9 .9 or 99% of my sensible, and 124% of my latent. This is completely normal. You'll see this sometimes. It's really, really humid in the shop right now. And so that high humidity, that's why I have a really low temp split. Measure Quick's automatically calculate the temp split at 17.1. We're at 16.1, so we're doing one degree. But look at the dehumidification. 5.6 or about three quarters of a gallon per hour of water. That's a lot of water coming out here. Our energy efficiency, our enthalpy in and out, our dew point, you can see our dew point is 54 degrees. That's a really high dew point and our air density calculation. So all that reading, all those things look good. I'll hit home on here and go back here and, uh, sorry, I should hit back here. And now I'm just gonna save the data. Now I can look at my diagnostics again. You can see the only diagnostic I have right now is low load on the evaporator. And that's because it's below 70 degrees in here. It's about 68 degrees. But otherwise there's no faults in here that would flag that would tell us we have an issue. I'm just gonna hit save the data. And now the, the data has been saved. So now what I can do is hit view, and there's a couple different things I can do with the data here. So now, what I like to do in particular is to print out a report. So I have the printer turned on here, and I'm just gonna hit print to measure quick printer, and in just a second here, this will start to spit out. This is a Bluetooth printer. It's really, really fast here, so this is nice to give the customer a hard copy of the report. So let that whole thing print out there, pull this off, you can see it's got my AC system overview, a date and a timestamp, my geo coordinates where the job was done, my notes, the customer name, measure quick, and our address and our phone number, our system ID, condenser, model number, serial numbers, and then all the information about how that piece of equipment was uh, running, the weather data, the outdoor measurements, the indoor measurements, all of our performance metrics so you can hand this to the customer and really assure them that the job was done right. And then the second thing I can do here is hit share and I can export a PDF. 
Now the PDF will actually show us on here all of our, all of our measurements. It shows us what tool it came off of, the condenser voltage, the amperage, everything on there. It ties in all our performance metrics and it also ties in our, uh, um, all of our information about our uh, system. Model numbers, serial numbers, and then any of the photos that we took on there. And I can just email this report to the customer uh, simply by um, tapping on the screen here and hitting mail or email or print or whatever you want to do. You can just shoot this off to the customer, or drop, airdrop it, whatever you want to do. But it makes it really, really quick and easy to do. So this gives you a really good idea of how you go through and you do a, a job report on MeasureQuick. If there's a problem, MeasureQuick will also flag that right away. It's going to tell you if you have a restriction in your liquid line or a return duct leakage or one of other probably 100, 150 different problems we can diagnose. So it's really going to make you much more efficient at your diagnostics and troubleshooting. But you know, it's, it's really about letting the tools do the work for you. And that's really what MeasureQuick is all about. It's about getting that job done faster, making sure it's done accurately, making sure if you're sending a younger technician out that he's not missing things that are, could be really billable uh, repairs. And if you're sending the older guy out there, he's just getting the job done a whole heck of a lot faster. And uh, hopefully you got a little bit out of this video, but give you a good overview of what we're, what we're doing here. But it's honestly about doing something with the data. Everybody takes measurements, but not everybody does something with them. And that's what MeasureQuick's all about. So, hey, thanks a lot for watching this video. This is Jim Bergman. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you would, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.